Okay, let's go ahead and figure out the solution to this nice little algebra word problem here. And of course, the first step to solve any problem in mathematics is to read the problem. So let's go ahead and do that right now. It says plane A has 106 more seats than plane B. Together they have 618 seats. How many seats does each plane have? Okay, so again, I don't want to give you too many hints here, um, although I did say this was an algebra word problem, so you're going to need to know a little bit of algebra to solve this problem. So if you think you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answers into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct uh, answer in just one moment, and then, of course, I'm going to walk through the solution step by step. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. It's really my true calling to help uh, people learn mathematics. And I'm going to tell you right now, all of you can be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that have a tough time learning mathematics, okay? I'm going to tell you right now, if you think you're a bad math student, there is no such thing. So here's the three things you need in order to be successful in mathematics. One, you got to be willing to work hard. There really is no shortcuts to learn math. So if you're kind of halfway working or you don't really want to take notes or do all your homework or, you know, go to school all the time, well, you're not going to learn the subject, not only math, but any subject. You got to be willing to work hard. Uh, so that's the first thing if you truly want to learn mathematics. The second thing you need is encouragement. And this is really important for those of you that are struggling. Okay, there's nothing more frustrating than, you know, kind of putting some effort in but not seeing the results, okay? But I'm telling you, please do not give up because there is a path forward. But here is the third and most important thing you need to be successful in math. You need great math instruction. So whoever you're learning from or whatever you're learning from, you got to be able to understand the instruction. If you're sitting in the classroom for uh, 30 minutes, an hour, and you have no idea what's being taught to you, well, guess what? You're not really learning, right? Because math is a technical uh, subject, okay? And it can be taught in a very technical, textbooky kind of way. That's not the way I like to teach math. I like to explain math in easy to understand language so everyone can get what's going on without watering down what you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that has math on it that you're getting ready for, something like the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, Check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description as well because most students take average notes at best. If you're not taking any notes, okay, you need to immediately correct that. And, uh, in order to truly learn math and be great at math, you have to have great math notes. But you can use my notes in the meantime if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer to this question. And uh, let's see the answer here. Of course, I'm going to repeat the question in just one moment. But here is the solution. So plane A has 362 seats and plane B has 256 seats. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, that's pretty good. Matter of fact, you definitely earned yourself a nice little happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and a few stars so you can show off uh, to your friends and family that you know how to solve algebra word problems, right? So nice job. If you didn't get this right and uh, you attempted the problem, listen, uh, that's still very good, right? You should never look at a problem in math and just say to yourself immediately, oh, I do, I can't, I can't do that problem, okay? That's the worst thing you can do. You should always attempt to do a problem because when you start actually trying to figure something out, you'll, you know, you have to use your, your brain. You have to think, right? You're not going to be able to immediately look at a problem and say, oh, that's just too hard for me to do, all right? So if you're doing that, try to at least to attempt to solve a problem. Even if you know you're not going to get the absolute right answer, just see how far you can take the problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the solution to this problem. And here it goes. So we have plane A. We have these two planes, right? So we have plane A has 106 more seats than plane B. Together, they have 618 seats. How many seats does each plane have? 
So when you're dealing with an algebra word problem or any math word problem, you want to read that problem at least a couple times, right? So when you, if you read it one time, that's not enough. Read it one time so you got you know a sense of what's being um, asked. To read it again to try to get in some more detail, and then read it one more time to really get a sense of what the question uh, being asked here. So how do you know the question in a problem? Well, you go to the question mark and you back up. So here we want to know how many seats does each plane have. So we have plane A and plane B, and we're looking for the number of seats for each of those respective planes. So uh, the next thing you want to do when you're dealing with an algebra word problem is to try to model it in some way. And this, you know, can look different for different students. Now, the way I'm going to solve it, you might have done it um, in a different manner, okay? But you, as long as you got the right answer, that's what counts, and you kind of, you know, justified your results. So that's the one thing you want to be thinking about when you're doing an algebra word problem or any math word problem is to show your work. Okay. It doesn't have to be exactly like the way your teacher would do it or exactly like some other student in the class would do it. You just want to be able to prove and justify your conclusions. Okay. And you got to write things down. All right. So this is the way I'm going to approach this problem. So we have two unknowns here, right? We're looking for the number of seats for plane A and uh, the number of seats for plane B. Okay, so we're looking, we got plane A and we have plane B and we want to know how many seats does each of these planes have. So let's go ahead and assign some variables here. So let's let A equal the number of seats plane A has. Okay, and then we'll let B equal the number of seats plane B has. So it's important that when you're using variables uh, to solve an algebra word problem that you assign them and you're very specific about what those variables represent, okay? So some of you might be like, okay, A is, uh, you know, uh, represents a, the number of seats in plane for plane A. You might know that in your brain, but you want to write that down so your teacher understands that you understand that this is what this represents. So you got to be very specific when you assign variables to what they actually mean. And of course, we're dealing with plane A and plane B. So use those respective variables A and B. You don't want to be like, uh, let G equal the number of seats plane A has, and then let H equal the number of planes plane B, uh, B has. You always want to use variables that make sense to you. All right, so that's what we're going to do. So we have assigned some variables, and now what do we need to do? Well, because we have two variables, in okay, case so we have two variables, we need to construct or find two equations, okay? So this is kind of a basic rule of algebra. You need the number of equations you need to solve for variables is dependent upon the number of variables that you are uh, looking to solve for. All right, now hopefully I said that uh, without it being too confusing, but here's the deal. I'm looking to solve for two variables, A and B, okay? So I'm gonna need some sort of equation to solve for these variables, I, but one equation's not gonna be enough. I'm gonna need two equations because I have two variables. So from the information in the problem, I wanna construct two separate equations because I have two uh, variables here and we're what we're going to be forming here is a system of equations. So let's go ahead and take a look at those um, uh, equations. All right, so here's plane um, or A. Of course, I already did this here, but let's just kind of review what I'm doing. So A equals B plus 106. So we know that plane A has 106 more seats than plane B. So which plane has more? Uh, which plane has more seats? Okay. Well, plane A has more seats than plane B, right? It has 106 more seats. So we can write an equation that A. Okay. Of course, A is the uh, represents the number of seats on plane A. Is Whatever plane B has, it has 106 more seats than whatever plane B has. That's what plane uh, A has. Now, this can be very confusing for students. Oftentimes, students will um, kind of just quickly write this and be like, B equals A plus 106. When you're um, constructing equations, really think about it uh, you know, in a very precise way. Double check and make sure your equation makes sense. Okay, so plane A 
has more seats than plane B, right? How many more seats? 106 more seats. So you can write this first equation, A is equal to B plus 106. All right, so now let's use the rest of the information in the problem, and that is what? Together they have 618 seats. So whatever plane A has, okay, plus the number of seats plane B has, together they have 618, so A plus B is equal to 618. Okay, so here you have two variables, right? Obviously A and B, and we have two equations. So what we have here, technically speaking, is what we call a system, all right? Uh, and to be even more technical, this is what we call a two-variable linear system. All right, now that's, it is important for you to know what we're dealing with here, but basically the big picture concepts that I'm trying to explain is, hey, if you're solving for A or B or X and Y, you're gonna need more than just one equation. So at this point in the problem, if you didn't um, you know, uh, get these equations set up, no big deal. So this is kind of like phase one, okay? Phase one of this problem, or actually probably like phase two. Phase one is to kind of set up your variables. Phase two is to construct some equations. Now phase three is going to be to solve this system, all right? So now the question is, do you have the skills, all right? Do you have the skills to solve a two variable linear system, all right? Now, if you're kind of confused and you happen to be in a uh, algebra one class or a pre-algebra class, certainly like algebra two class, and you're like, boy, I already need help with this. Let me give you some suggestions. I'm gonna probably direct you towards my algebra one course in my math help program. Again, if you're in Algebra 2, I teach systems in that course. I also introduce systems in my pre-algebra course. If you're in a pre-calculus level or more advanced math, then this would be like a major math emergency if you don't understand this, because this is kind of basic level stuff. Now, how can we solve this system? Well, there's different techniques you can use. Primarily, you want to be thinking about the substitution method, or linear, uh, linear combination uh, and or elimination method. There's other techniques you can uh, use to solve this, but these are the skills that you're gonna need to have in order to uh, solve for A and B. All right, so let's go ahead and actually see that work right now. So this problem is set up super easy to uh, use the substitution method. So here I have A plus B is equal to 618. I know that A, okay, is equal to B plus 106, right? So this is easy. So I can replace this A, okay, because A is the same thing as B plus 106. I can replace this A with B plus 106, all right? That's called the substitution method. Now, the reason why I'm replacing this A with this, because I want to have one equation, right? I want to be able to get right one equation in one variable, okay? one variable and the variable here will be b okay so i can't possibly teach you the substitution method and everything else here uh in all in this one particular video but hopefully you understand this so let's go ahead and see the substitution method in action all right so we have a plus b is equal to 618 we're going to replace this a with this uh, b plus 106 so you can see this right here okay replacing this a with b plus 106 so that's going to give us B plus 106 plus B is equal to 618 when I substitute that A. All right, so now I'm off to the races to solve this nice little linear equation in one variable. Okay, so now I know how to solve equations in one variable. So I got B and B, so that gives me 2B plus 106 is equal to 618. So what do we need to do uh, next here? Well, now we need to subtract 106 from both sides of the equation. You're going to get 2B is equal to 512. And to solve for B, I simply just need to divide uh, both sides of the equation by 2. And you get B is equal to 256. Now, if you don't understand any of this stuff, then again, you know, I'm going to direct you towards my Algebra 1 course and or pre-algebra. This is basic linear equations. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, solve for A. So we now we know what B is equal to. So how can we get the rest of the uh, answer? Well, remember, we had two equations, okay, that we used to set up this problem. But this is the easiest equation to uh, use, right? So A is equal to B plus 106. So whatever B is equal to, which, of course, we now know is 256, to get A, remember, plane A has 
um, 106 more seats than whatever plane B has, and plane B is 256. So 256 plus 106 is 362. Okay, so pretty, um, I would say, medium level word problem for those of you out there that are taking any sort of math course that involves algebra. And, uh, you know, the course they could be taking could be Algebra 1, it could be Math 101, it could be College Pre-Algebra. Uh, there's a lot of different names to uh, math courses that are effectively teaching the same thing, which is pretty much what I like to classify as uh, first-year algebra, okay? But this is a type of prom that you should be able to handle because it's in, it involves uh, basic concepts like linear systems, which are critically important for those of you that are at that basic algebra level. But uh, here, you know, again, you know, the only way you're going to get better at this is to practice, all right? By you watching me do this problem, you're going to understand how, how this problem was solved, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get better at word prompts, okay? If you wanted to get better at basketball, would you just watch TV all day long, watch the NBA? Is that going to actually help you, okay, improve your own game? Well, the answer is obviously no. Now, if you go outside and you actually go shoot basketballs and you like make the basket one time, okay, you're like, well, look at that. I made a basket. Therefore, I don't need to practice anymore because I will make the basket every single time. Well, listen, obviously, that's not, you know, uh, effective practice. Math is no different, okay? Like sports, that's a skill. Math is a skill. So once you get the knowledge down and the technique down, what you need to do is challenge yourself. Just like on a basketball court, you know, you go further out, you go closer in, you go to left, right, and everything else. No different in mathematics. You start with easy problems and more advanced problems, different type of problems. So again, you know, as I uh, stated in the beginning of this video, there are no shortcuts in learning math, okay? But if you're willing to work hard and you have great instruction to help you out, okay, and you don't quit, you will get better, right? And you will achieve uh, your math goals, okay? You just can't quit. All right, so hopefully this little video helps you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.